At the end of a five-day trip from England, the Queen Elizabeth, world's largest ocean liner, pulls into New York Harbor. Aboard are almost 15,000 happy GIs, most of them men of the 8th Air Force, jamming every square inch of deck space for a look at the USA. secret docking of the Queen Elizabeth, her first voyage with light showing and portholes open. These are the guys who helped win it for us against the Nazis, and the entire nation welcomes them home. Yeah, I'm Elwood, Woody Hughes. I was born and raised on a farm in Indiana, and uh, I was uh, going to be drafted in, after high school in 1943, and I decided that uh, I would enlist. I had a choice, Army, Navy, or Marine Corps, and uh, I think they needed, they needed bodies back then. They didn't care. You know, we needed Navy men. We needed Air Force men. We needed uh, Army men. And then uh, Marines, uh, I was, I was uh, unaware of that they were amphibious assault troops more than at that time. And, uh, not that I was gung-ho about getting into a fight, but uh, they were in the news and, and we were being encouraged to get in the Marine Corps. My name is Tom Newton. I was drafted uh, one year out of high school. I graduated from Wayne Tech in 1965. Again, as being a, uh, a, a draftee, I was not allowed to pick any of my destinations or jobs or anything. I was assigned to an aviation battalion. So I flew on Chinook helicopters almost the whole year. It was better than pounding the ground with a radio on my back. Hey, my name is Fred Wilhelm. I got drafted in May of 1968, and I thought, well, this is an adventure. I I'm single, I'm living with my folks, and I got a kind of a dead-end job, so let's go. <laughs> let's do it. I sleep but not too deep, I always face the door. I train myself to hear even sneakers on the floor. They won't leave me be, my night's in the war. Tell me exactly what you're fighting for. I'll never forget it, see. I went in August 6th, I think it was August 6th, or February 6th, exactly 30 months in the Marine Corps. I was over two and a half years. I got in I December the 24th, 1945. I, I got in to San Diego and called my folks on the phone that I was back in the States. I took a train, come into Great Lakes to be discharged. I'm anxious to get home. And then I took a train from Great Lakes to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and my folks met me at Fort Wayne. It was a pleasant home, nice. The sergeant came around, was head of our detail, he says, here, read that. I said, what is it? He said, GI Bill of Rights, read it. You may want to use it. And I did, and I went to Ball State after the war. I got my bachelor's degree. I got my master's degree. It was all education. I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for my service experience and the fact that the government gave me a free education. Welcome home, GI. Welcome home, GI. I get nothing else to say to you boys today except welcome. Welcome home, G.I. Welcome home, G.I. Ain't no better sound back from a killing ground than hey, welcome home. One of the big things about that is, uh, with welcome Vietnam, home. was you went there alone, you came back alone. And oh, you left all your buddies there and everything. Life so basically, I caught a cab and went to the airport, and you know, they gave you a, a ticket to leave. You know, 
separation pay and all that. And you went back, and uh, the folks knew I was coming back one of those days, so they were ready. And um, it was just basically like you're back home on the block. It was, it was nothing special. You can judge me if you had to kill. Didn't think you had the will until you watched your buddies die, until you heard your buddies cry. Uh, I had no idea of the anti-war movement at that point, to that degree. When we got home, it was pretty much quiet, no welcoming whatsoever. I was met with total indifference. People didn't even look at us. They kind of looked down and around us and didn't show us any preference. But they didn't show us any, any, uh, you know, degradation. So we just walked back like we were one of the other normal civilians and came home with my family. There was two or three of them there. They knew we were coming home. Welcome home, G.I. I got nothing else to say to you boys today. Said welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home, G.I. Welcome home, G.I. Ain't no better sound back from a killing ground than welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Come on, soldier. 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 Come on,